sharing around a table with family and friends is really at the heart of our lives. And sharing around the table is at the heart of what it means to be in community. And that includes our church family community. This picture captures what I truly missed the most while I was recovering from surgery. Not simply the physical act of eating, and probably less the physical act of eating, that's the truth, than the shared experience of being in community around the table. A few weeks ago, I received by email a meditation written by Henry Nowen, and it began with these words. The table is the place of intimacy. And he went on to elaborate as to what that means. He wrote that the table is the place where we talk together. Now, I know that this is shocking for all of you, but you can just picture that, right? The sharing of old stories and the sharing of new stories. At the table, we share our laughter and we share our tears. But the table can also be the place where our anger and jealousy come out in our relationship with others. At the table, we can experience friendship and community, and we can experience hatred and division as well. As I read Henry's description, I thought about the table before us this evening. And if you extend this table as it is around the world with the followers of Jesus, This is the table where Jesus invites his followers to draw close. Jesus invites us as he invited his first followers at that critical time in his life and mission on earth. It takes courage to answer his invitation. And it certainly takes grace to answer his call. For when we gather close with Jesus at this table, we learn what is required of us if we wish to follow Jesus. And what is required of us in order to follow Jesus closely is nothing less than what was required of him. The bread and the chalice remind us that Jesus gave everything. Jesus gave his very life for us and for the world, for our redemption. And he gives us this meal to remember. This is his body. This is his blood. This is his life. And this is also our way to new life, abundant life, eternal life. And on this night in particular, we add the pitcher and the basin, just now down there on the table, pictures here. And as Melissa read for us from the gospel, Jesus washes his disciples' feet as part of this meal. And he gives us this as a way to remember him and who he is as the servant of all. But Jesus also gives this as a way that we might honor him 
as we follow his example. Now, did you notice that Peter protests? No, no, you'll never wash my feet. And I just can relate to what Peter's saying because he expresses the reality that we all face when we allow Jesus to wash our feet. We become vulnerable and we must acknowledge and confront our own human need and that we are absolutely dependent on God. This is what it means to receive the grace of Jesus Christ. And so in order to draw close to Jesus, we must open ourselves with a humble spirit, with a spirit of repentance. And I want to put it this way for us tonight. Lean into the grace of Jesus Christ. My friends, my experience of Lent this year was different than any other in my life. And all I could do was lean into the grace of Jesus Christ because I couldn't do anything else. All I could do was really lean on the grace of Jesus Christ. This is part of what it means when Jesus invites us to gather close, to simply be, to be with him, and to be with our faith family. So while I was healing, I was trying to focus on being with Jesus, sort of that running conversation as the day went on. He was the only one listening to me. But to simply be and to know that that's enough, that's enough. And so I want to continue to have that focus in my life as I move forward and my activity picks back up. You see, we all really need to set aside that time to simply be in the presence of God. Gather close. You can almost hear the heartbeat of our Savior. And as we spend time with Jesus, we learn to follow his example. And on this night, Jesus gives us a new commandment. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. I know a number of you have seen this reminder that this night is also called Maundy Thursday, taken from the Latin, and Mark will confirm this for me, the Latin word for commandment. So this is Maundy Thursday. Now you might say, Jesus' commandment to love is familiar. What's so new about it? Well, I believe that it's given new meaning by what else happens on this evening and following the meal. The command to love as Jesus loves is a call to follow Jesus and to imitate the way he loves. A love that is unconditional, a love that is limitless a love that serves others. And Jesus goes on to say that other people will recognize his followers by the way that they love. So tonight, we gather close to Jesus to share in the holy meal he gave us, 
to pray for the needs of God's people in our community and around the world, to commit ourselves to love as Jesus loves, and to lean into God's grace and receive what we need to go forth and to serve in the way of our Savior. Gather close so we may remain with Jesus even in times of challenge and sacrifice.